The lions of the insect world, these carnivorous insects stalk their prey across the African savanna in the cover of night. They're so elusive, in fact, that we didn't even know they existed until the early 2000s. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we're talking about the Mantophasmatodia, also known as the gladiators. If you've never heard of this order, don't beat yourself up over it. Not only are the gladiators the smallest insect order with under 20 described species, but they're also the most recently described. So we've had museum specimens of these guys for some time now, but it wasn't until 2001 that they were described as their own order. You see, mantophasmatids look sort of like weird grasshopper nymphs at first glance, so they blend right into these massive collections of old insect specimens. It also doesn't help that they're limited to just a few select regions of Africa. But nonetheless, in 2001, the mantophasmatodia were established as the 29th insect order. And this is very recent for an ordinal level discovery. I mean, before that, the last described insect order was the Grilloblatidea, the ice crawlers, back in 1914. And if you've seen my last video, you know how obscure the Grilloblatids are. Oddly enough, these two obscure orders are closely related, with some people grouping them together as a single order, the Notoptera. The reason I say this is odd is because these orders have very obscure ranges and no overlap. The ice crawlers live in mountainous regions and glacial areas of North America and some areas of Asia, while, as we discussed, the gladiators live in small regions of Africa. They aren't even on the same side of the equator. Well, Grilloblatidea and Mantophasmatodia are both what we call relict groups. Relict groups are taxons that were more diverse or widespread in the past and now are a smaller piece of what they once were. In fact, mantophasmatids have been found in Baltic amber, and a fossilized specimen was found over in China, which suggests a pretty broad distribution. And in case you were curious, current research suggests that the grouping of these two orders, the clade Xenonomia, is related to the stick insects and web spinners. Okay, let's pause for a second because I can see how this could be confusing. So when people group together the Mantophasmatodia and the Grilloblatidea as a single order, they call that order Notoptera. For those that consider them separate orders, they refer to the conglomerate of these two closely related insects, the Xenonomia. Unpause. So let's finally dive into what these gladiators even look like. Well, as mentioned, they have sort of a grasshopper mantis-like appearance. Their mouthparts are hypognathous, meaning they point downward. This is as opposed to prognathous, where the mouthparts point outward. They've got well-developed eyes, long, thin antennae, cylindrical bodies, and short cerci. They also lack wings, which gives them that nymph-like appearance. However, the most distinctive trait of gladiators is their feet. Gladiators have a significantly enlarged aroleum which is the fleshy pad between the claws of some insects. And when gladiators walk, they do so with their claws and aroleum lifted off the ground, giving them their other common name, the heel walkers. To test its function, scientists ablated, or damaged, the aroleum of some specimens to try and figure out what it couldn't do. And it turns out it couldn't adhere to smooth surfaces very well. It seems the aeroleum secretes a fluid that helps with surface adhesion, and when this isn't necessary, they walk with their heels lifted. You would think their scientific name might reference this, but they really just did the same thing they did with the Grilloblatidea, where they mushed together the scientific names of other groups. So Mantophasmatodia means mantis stick insect, with Mantidea being the order of mantids, and Phasmatodia being the order of stick insects. However, some stick insects are also known for using their aeroleum for adhesion. So I guess you could say that it's referencing the heel walking behavior. Might be a stretch. Mantophasmatids are hemimetabolous, meaning they have an incomplete three-stage metamorphosis, going from egg to nymph to adult. 
The Mantaphasmatodia spend their days in the African savanna and shrubland. Female gladiators will lay a few batches of 30 or so eggs into the soil, mixing in a sticky secretion with the sands to create a hardened casing for each egg batch. These eggs will wait out the dry season for up to eight months before hatching at the start of the rainy season. The nymphs will take around three to four months to reach adulthood, and both the nymphs and adults are predatory in nature, stalking their prey under the cover of night. Once they're in striking range, they use a burst of speed to ambush their prey. Their front legs are adapted like that of a mantis, where they grasp their prey and pull them in close for the mandibles to finish the job. We call legs modified for grasping raptorial legs. When it's time to mate, male gladiators will drum a vibrational pattern into the substrate with their abdomens. And when the females hear this, they'll respond with their own drumming pattern. And this call and answer continues until the pair eventually meets. However, recent evidence seems to suggest a pheromone component to mate location as well. A pair of gladiators can remain in copulation for days at a time, and the female will even go about hunting with the male still attached. The male, on the other hand, goes hungry and loses a significant amount of his body mass, and thus the cycle continues. Mantaphasmatodia usually only has one generation per year, following the restrictions of the wet and dry seasons. When an organism has one generation per year, we normally call that univoltine. This is as opposed to multivoltine, which has more than one generation per year. Or you might hear bivoltine, which is two per year, or trivoltine, which is three per year, or semivoltine, which is less than one per year, and so on. As you might have guessed, these guys aren't really ever pests. I mean, we didn't even know they existed for a while there. However, they are efficient predators, so they do a great job at keeping other insects in check within the areas they're found. Plants need predators to keep their herbivores from overtaking them. And they look cool, so let's keep them around. Once again, this is a pretty obscure distribution, so I doubt many of you have them in your backyard, and we don't really know a lot about their conservation. It is common to burn off excess vegetation in the agricultural regions they're found, so that could negatively impact them. Also, climate change could affect the length and intensity of the dry seasons, which is also bad news for them. So I guess if you want to help these guys, just go ahead and stop climate change. Thank you all so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to keep up to date with future content. And if you have any fun facts about this group, or just if you've been lucky enough to see one, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. Peace, y'all.